I really don't know what's going on here. I, I was hitting them one second, and now they're doing their own thing. You know, I might have just stumbled on the ultimate automatic farm. Oh, this is this is horrible. <laughs> oh, no. due to technical difficulties, I cannot record anymore at the sky base. But that's okay. That's not the main focus of this episode. When when we first arrived on the scene, this was like a sheer wall for some reason. We kind of carved this out before when we were figuring out the shape of this. Um, this was also kind of really flat and thought, you know, I could, I could use some, some work. So what I did is I pre kind of set up some, uh, scaffolding to kind of help us out. Uh, those two high dives up there are kind of the spots where I want the cliff to stick the most out to towards. I would, uh, well, I guess I'm no language expert there, but the, the fact remains. This is going to be where basically you look over and you see this. The reason I picked this spot in particular for to be the spot where I would be able to stand the most out over this is because it's just a little bit lower than the highest part there so it can kind of dip down by the time it gets over here and there's enough room for this to kind of curve up and that's actually why I went ahead and put this here sort of like a guide so it's going to curve like a straight line from that block to this block and from this block the reason why I have all this stuff even further down ooh, is it's a little risky is to eventually blend this into th this from about this distance I can kind of tell if this is going to look natural or not um, so what I probably do is that since this is going up at this angle, maybe I'll try to fill this out a little bit over here. It doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth angle, but it can, you know, kind of do something like, oh, whoops, kind of like that. Maybe even do a little, little pride rock action like that. And I could always come back out here to kind of check my work. So that's why I like to have a little scaffold set up. I'm thinking that I kind of want to maintain a view of this, even as you're walking up, but it only has to be really on one side, I don't need it from both sides. So I might start this a little further back, where I kind of start widening it. And then I'll kind of make it less, which effectively makes a curve kind of happen. And maybe from here, start coming in, you see we're getting closer to the cliff. Uh, if this is coming in too sharp, I could always temper it a little bit, like you know, like that, and yeah, that's not so that's not too bad looking. And then the other side, I would kind of like to get away with a bit of a wider um, angle of approach on that, like maybe make this kind of bow out. What I would do is I'd use all of the basically all the viewpoints I have possible to really see if this looks like an actually good thing or, or not. Let's take a couple looks here, which is kind of a bad angle. Here, which is a little better. Here at the portal, and here at the bottom, which is starting to become my favorite view just because I can kind of see the details. So since this will be kind of like a junior version of this and shift it over just a little bit, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to use this as a guide though. So it starts off steep and then gradually kind of goes in. Maybe I should start by just with shapes I know. It's always good to start with shapes you know. So here's a straight diagonal line. Let's see how that looks. That's not horrible, although there's not much character to it. So you know what I might do? Just kind of add a little bit of an S turn in there. And then like around here, start to get it closer to the side. Yeah, other side, I'm gonna try to do the same thing. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit wider. So I'm actually gonna bring it out a lot wider. I'm actually not gonna be afraid of getting too close to that edge. It's like diff different distances from this edge is actually gonna make it seem that much more natural. Like if every block is always gonna be the same distance away from a ledge, you do start to notice 
And when people say they want things like naturalized or randomized, they just don't want to notice that it's man-made. That's, that's really all. I'm going to get an action shot just to see multiple angles at once. So I'm going to jump off. All right. <laughs> I, got, I got all the info I needed. All this stuff I'm mentioning, by the way, I talked about in a previous video way back. There was a video on how to make mountains uh, block by block. And it utilized kind of these shelf making. So if, if you want a more in-depth analysis by myself, uh, go ahead and check that out. Generally, I realize that it's going to be really steep to get to this part and not as, it's going to be steep, but getting less steep to get to that part. And that's just going in this direction. So I'm going to try to keep that in mind here. I'm going to start by kind of buffering these areas that are going to have to extend a little more. To do that, I'll probably just throw in more blocks, kind of like this. At least so there's not like a dent where there needs to be an outcropping. Like, you know, that's the least I could do. It doesn't have to be perfect, just, you know, a thing. I'll probably put the next block, like maybe eh, here-ish. <laughs> this is just gonna, at this point, mimic what's happening right above it, but scaled down. So, I would say I'd probably start hugging this. And actually, this this is where this is a kind of a dynamic process because I might still go ahead and take out some of this because there is a there's a shape underneath it that I don't want to just ignore. And that's already looking a lot better. Look at that, slowly but surely, making a mountain thing. Now, from this part, since I just filled that in, I can go ahead and uh, start trying to kind of make the next row down feel a little bit more at home right next to it. So I know I, I took those out and I put them back in just to take them out again. But like I said, this is kind of a dynamic process. And really I don't mind. I really want this to start blending in faster though to the edge. So what I'll do is I'll kind of make this the last one I touch up. I actually really like that. And let's get a dynamic view. <laughs> Looks pretty good from the portal. I like it. I'm, I'm good with it. What's really important for this next row, though, is remembering just how steep that was going into this. So when I hook it up to this, I'm going to want to really remember and probably start with that fact. Like have this maybe come out three. Have it come over to the side a little bit because it needs to eventually be there. In fact, what I might do, I'm going to lose a piece of ladder by doing that, but that's okay. I'm probably going to start making this connect in so I can actually like tell what I'm doing. I'm thinking something like that. So all I'm really doing is trying to make this evenly as, as I can kind of sync up with this. So a lot of times what I'll do is kind of go at an angle and kind of messily try to try to create the connection. So I can tell most of this is probably just going to have a block straight underneath it with few exceptions. The exceptions will probably be stuff like a random corner every so often. Like uh, actually that would have been a good corner. But it doesn't have to happen incredibly often because I'd like it to be at least kind of a thick looking shelf. You know, something you could stand on. I'll leave that little corner at the end there and I think I'll leave this corner as well. No, nah, I'll fill it in. I'll fill in that one too. I'll leave that corner, fill this one in. Yeah, it's a lot of like deciding which one do I fill in and which one don't I. Do I or don't I? That's that's the name of the game. These are actually really close to each other, so I could almost have this just go straight down. In fact, that one is exactly what that will be. So what I could do is just bring these down, and wherever I see a ledge, I'll just build it up a little ways, but not all the ways. So anyways, carrying on. I'm just going to go ahead and make this shelf big. <laughs> Bigger. Just so I have... I, I'm having trouble reaching further out. And I think that'll help a bit. 
because then I can start to connect these up where I want them to. And I'll just leave a corner every so often because this this is uh, supposed to be gradually raising up, rising up. Just fill this in. There's torches in there to keep it from spawning stuff. There. The moment of truth, though, is finding out if it looks good. After all that work, does it look good? Oh, look at that. I was and I was worried. I was so worried. Worried over nothing. Like that. I, I forget sometimes just how forgiving mountains are because as long as you kind of you know, have a rough idea of what you're trying to do stuff starts to look good uh, yeah that still looks a little flat there so I'll probably jump on over there uh, but really this could have been a lot worse alright so I do have some criticism on this side I think that angle right there could have probably came in a little bit closer so what I'll probably do is get right under it and kind of shave some of it away maybe some here too the top of the masterpiece this is the icing on the cake or the upper layer of the lower layer of the multi-layer cake I think I want some cake I don't think I've had cake in a while so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do whatever the layers below it are doing as if they were continuing so like this kind of stops here but I think it doesn't have to you know what I mean of course the trick is to vary on it slightly don't do exactly what it's doing so I might kinda of have this get closer to the edge over here especially since that was a bit steeper from below we'll just keep going up layer by layer slowly until it reaches this I'll probably use this as a guide. This next part's gonna be kind of tricky here because I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this. But what I'm probably gonna do is just kind of dig away at this and and re come down here and sort of recheck my work. You know what? I was gonna count off several different times that I would go up there and come back to check on it, but really I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> oh, oh yes. That's like professional grade or something. Actually, that's that's a very odd shape for that uh, outcropping right there. But you know what? I it's it's unique. It's unique. I'll I'll go with that. I guess if I really wanted to do something else to it, I would kind of shave this here, there, and just, I think that'd be it. And now Red McNed will be performing the triple Lindy. Oh jeez, looks kind of scary. All right, get up the nerve. And oh, I missed the jump. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, redo, redo. All right, everyone at home's watching. Come on, you can do this. You can do this. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that was awesome. <laughs> yes, it worked. I mean, very good. Very good. <laughs> very good. Now we can continue. Uh, last time, we got all the way up here and did a nice little entrance from the whirlpool. And it ended around here. Since then, I've been kind of doing some stuff, working out things. And I think that we can do another room here. What I want to do in here, I've got a little friend here, and just in case, I brought more friends. But basically, I want to make like kind of a, a cavern, like a really, a bit more cavey looking room. Like this room is much more stonework and stuff, very controlled, very planned out. I want this room to be much, much less. So to get a natural feel, that's why I like to use uh, explosives. So I think there's enough room here if I'm just right in the middle to uh, kind of set up what I want to get going. So one of, one of my favorite ways to do this is to uh, go to, you know, make a little dark area here like this. Um, basically one, two, three. Yeah, three in on each, each side. And then I put in two TNT 
on each side of that. And there was no reason to take this out. But going back down, put that in the middle, put some dirt underneath that, and a little lever. See if I can get it back. I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to stick around. Okay, here. You're going to need to not be in here. Are they really mating? Are they really mating? Jeez. Alright, so I didn't expect that. Oh my god. Now, I guess... Oh, really? We're in the extreme hills. So these do technically... I hear, I hear more of them. I know they're around. Oh, are they in here? They're just being horrible in here somewhere. All right, let's get let's get the health back up. So normally that wouldn't happen, but this is kind of what I want to uh, want to be seeing here. It is a really natural looking shape of a cave room. Now, since I think I have a little bit more room to work with, I might do a little bit more blasting. And sometimes, one of the best ways to do that is just blow up everything. Now, what I'm going to do this time, <laughs> before I light all these, or not, right after them, is I'm going to get out of there, get... Is there something in the way? Yes, there is. <laughs> all right. Luckily... <laughs> I think that's blowing him up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. This is much, much better. So now I think what I'm going to do is just, uh, I guess the fine-tuning, sort of. I'm going to kind of push stuff back. You know, make make it more, uh, more open. <sighs> Actually, you know what will help is if I uh, get rid of a bunch of this stuff and just level out the ground because I don't want to get too carried away and do too many weird steps at the same time so I think that would help alright that's that's a bit more on the level literally so now what I'm going to do is kind of push back a couple things like if I don't like this corner jutting out or that one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, this, uh, bleh. so I'm going to go ahead and do a lot of that off camera and explain myself after because I think that's the easier way to do this and that's more like it. Oh yeah. I think I can work with this. As you can see, I just kind of rounded out the edges a little bit. Just a little bit more circular. And... You know, but I tried to keep some spots not too, you know, perfect. You know, that's that's the thing with this stuff is... You, you can easily get into like a, a too smooth of a room. But the the only main thing is that there's enough room to do whatever I want, and the ground's flat, which I think is a good start. The next thing I'm going to do is kind of get a little floor plan, so I'll come back when I have that. Alright, I think I've got an interesting floor plan. And here's... The, that's, that's the side you'd start on, right? And there'll be like this little hoppy thing, just pretty basic. And then this sort of shelf over here for where the, you'd go in here. Uh, everything that's one down here, I'm probably going to lower even more and have sort of like some something that just kind of dissuades you so that you have to go along here. Like, I don't want anything to like bottomless pit or anything. But that's kind of what I'm going for. So to kind of demonstrate what's going on here, this is just a little bit off to the side right there. So it's, you know, th that's why I put it over there. So you can kind of... You can see that there's stuff over there, but it's not like a straight shot, so you're a little bit intrigued. You realize there's a place to go. But over here is going to be like the first real kind of obstacles of the place. And these are just really, really easy jumps. Uh, oh, these jumps that, you know, pretty much anybody could make. And, you know, nothing too fancy. They're all one wide. And something else I like about it is that when you're going across on these, you're forced to face this way, so you're not actually looking straight down there, so there's no huge giveaways, whatever I put down there. So your camera's forced to go this way. So by the time you get to the edge, this is not really in view anymore. So you think, oh, I need to hurry over there and see what it is. I did think it would be cool, actually, 
to have like a little section out here pointing out, kind of indicating that there's something here. Because I saw this and I thought, well, I could, you know, take all that and replace it with uh, smooth stone. Or I could try to do something like this, or maybe that, and have like some kind of a waterfall that comes down here and possibly something up there. So it's like a, a secret, a secret to see. And like maybe the astute observer would be like, hmm, I wonder why that's sticking out right there. The next thing I'll do is take all this inside here and drop it down. I'm thinking this looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. And I might even go an extra layer down because I think I should have water at the bottom of this. So like, I'll go one layer down just to put a layer of water there. But you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. So now I think I, you can probably see a little better what I'm trying to get at here. And you know, let's say you miss one of these. And uh, here's a view from underneath. I actually decided to um, make these little overhangs just to make them that much more uh, treacherous. And if you fall down, I went ahead and made the staircase that really looks like a staircase. So, you know, always, always have an escape route, just in case. Now this, I think I'm going to go ahead and do this on camera. Because I don't really know what I'm going to do yet, but I have an idea. Like what I probably do is have this like a two wide waterfall that comes down here. So that's fine. And we'll see kind of what this looks like if I just take out the dirt. All right, so that's kind of interesting. I'll probably go up at this sort of an angle. And I'm not sure. I think what I want is to have a little bit of an opening so I can kind of peek out. Or maybe I'll save that for a little bit further up here. Oh wait, so here's here's one of the beams for this, which means I probably want to be on top of it. Maybe this can like curve around. You know, I'll just get rid of this. Throw down some torches. And what I could do up here, and especially since you can kind of see from there, is I have some kind of a secret thing here. As for this, I'm thinking maybe like the water can like come from somewhere this way and sort of disappear. Like this is one of my favorite ways to make water disappear. Just like dig up a little bit here and then just have it kind of going in a little thing this way. I think I might get rid of these. That way it's kind of an even like from side to side it's pretty even looking as it goes all the way down about too wide till it gets to here and it'll be a way to get up here because it's swimming up water and I don't have any chests on me but I think we'll utilize chests just for the just for the fun of it around here so let's say I put this here hmm maybe I should go here actually alright so this is kind of interesting when you get over here, you t if you were to turn around, like, yeah, you'd see this bit here. And this doesn't really look like much. It just looks like, except for the fact that I see a torch right there. It's a little bit of a giveaway. But if you go over here, you can actually see those blocks I put down. You can realize, oh, there's something there. And if you uh, decide to swim up this waterfall, if once it's in here, and you come over here, you get, like, a little prize or something. I don't know what to put in there yet, though. I don't know, some kind of clue? I don't know. Clues for myself. Clues for anybody who's going through here. So I think we have time for one last step in this whole thing. I'm going to clean up little floating blocks, uh, any sort of scaffoldings, and, you know, maybe patch up some stuff, make it look better, add the water, and we'll see what we got. All right, recap time. So, long story short, You'd start here, jump off the cliff, blah blah blah, all this running around, and then you end up here. And you come up to this room. As you can see, I got it just uh, cleaned up a little bit on the torches, although I don't know what I'll do at the end with the lava lighting, but I think this works for now. 
And I'll just point out, I put little patches of uh, andesite, because I kind of like that. Like it, It's sort of like a little bit of a weathered texture we put in the water, waterfall. So we'll, we'll take a look as we go through it. So what you do is you can either jump this or actually just walk across these. It's kind of a interesting thing about Minecraft. You don't really have to jump corners. You can just walk across them. But that, anyways, anyways. These are all one, as I described, one wide. And yeah, doing this. Looks good. Looks very basic. And I actually like how this whole room looks. It looks pretty cool. Like a very, um, uh, going for that retro, uh, Zelda-like game feel, you know, back in the really early 3D platformers. So then you'd be on your way, or you could go opt for this little thing here, and yeah, you can see the chest from there. You can swim up this, which basically, this is just saying that if you see waterfalls in this dungeon, you could probably swim up them. So a lot of this is going to be basically preparing whoever would go through it. And that's that's the reward for now, I guess. It's preparing pe anybody who would go through it for what type of things to look for. So basic platforming. Uh, there'll be a way to recover if you do get that wrong, so that's fine. And waterfalls. And I even put in this little thing here so you can get down safely. Rewarding exploration is also a, a nice little concept. So now that we're done with this room, at least for the most part, I'll talk about this. I can only talk briefly because I, this is enough time for an episode. But this will be like the central room that this all leads to where all the action goes down. But like I said, that's for next time. So like always, I want to thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. All that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next episode.